Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. Today I'm going to diverge a bit from my previews of coming attractions that I mentioned a couple weeks ago and throw something in here that's a little bit different than what I've been doing. Now let me set the stage for this. Back around the early 2000s, I used to attend a lot of science fiction and comic type conventions and I noticed this ominous trend. There was these uh, there were a lot of young people, teenagers, that were carrying around these black books. Uh, they were all identical and they had this really mysterious, creepy writing on them that said, Death Note. And I was wondering, what is this? Is this some kind of a fad? Is it a cult? I had to find out. And so shall you. <laughs> As most of you probably figured out, I am talking about the classic, famous manga, Death Note, and its successor, an anime version uh, made by the studio Madhouse. It was an extremely popular franchise, and not only in Japan, but in America as well, although still a lot of normals, sort of normies may not have heard of it. So. I'm going to kind of give a little bit of background before we get into it. Of course, manga, that is, we'd say, comics, and anime, or cartoons, are a big deal in Japan, and a lot of them are focused towards adults rather than towards kids. And so much that they have make hundreds of, of these titles per year. A lot of them are very fantasy-oriented, very sci-fi-oriented, in particularly what I call the preposterous premise which means that some kind of weird thing is true in this story world, which allows for some interesting plot complications. And, you know, it's always something that happens to the protagonist. For example, maybe the protagonists can, can see spirits that other people can't see. Or perhaps the uh, hero has been in an accident. He was given a blood transfusion from a ghoul. <laughs> and after that, he craves human flesh, just like a ghoul. Our real anime that were popular, real manga and anime that were popular, and Death Note was another one. The premise of Death Note is that Shinigami are real. Now, the Shinigami, for those of you who aren't familiar with Japanese folklore, is like a Grim Reaper, except that he's not a single entity, as we would have. He's There are many of them. There are many of them that are male and female, all these spirits that help humans to the world of the dead. And this involves a very particular Shinigami. His name is Ryuk. Ryuk is bored. He's been around for millennia. And all they do is eat and sleep and gamble, that's their favorite pastime, and kill people. <laughs> and I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of this. Why can't somebody else do this? Why am I tasked with doing this? I want to do something else. So. He has this notebook, and this is how they kill people. It's like the death note that the kids were carrying around. And he decides to drop this in the human world and let a human do it for, for a change and see what happens. A brilliant young man called Let Yagami happens upon this notebook. Let Yagami is a high school student. He's on the cusp of graduation. He is the number one top-rated high school student in all of Japan, which shows you how smart he is. But at the same time, he is disaffected and cynical. His father is a, is a police chief, and as such, he's witnessed all the horrible things in society underneath the, the veneer, the law-abiding, civilized, and very polite veneer of Japanese society. And he's pondering his future, which should be very bright, but nonetheless, as a lot of young people are, he doesn't appreciate what he has, and he's like, ah, it's going to be terrible. So he finds this notebook and says, what is this? Picks it up. The, the legend says, Death Note. Before I go any further, I've got to give my spoiler alert. Death Note is something that a lot of normies don't know about, and a lot of people haven't seen yet that aren't anime fans. So I'm going to give the warning now. I'm going to give spoilers. I'm going to tell you exactly how the story ends. And if you don't want to see those spoilers, 
Uh, stop watching now. Go watch it. Go find it online. It's available on streaming platforms, etc. So Light Yagami has found this notebook and he starts looking inside. Most of it's blank, but there are a few instructions at the beginning. And he starts reading and immediately starts chuckling because this has got to be a joke. I'm going to read some of these verbatim. Fair use. Number one, the human whose name is written in this note shall die. Number two, this note will not take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. Number three, if the cause of death is written within the next 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. All the numbers in this series are multiples of four. Because four is considered bad luck in Asian culture. It's associated with death. So, of course, they use four and so on. Number four. If the cause of death is not specified, the person will simply die of a heart attack. Number five. After writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next six minutes and 40 seconds. Now, that is, I guess, if you want it to be something other than a heart attack. And six minutes and 40 seconds just happens to be 400 seconds. Interesting enough. Well, of course, Light thinks this is a joke. So he's kind of wondering whether he should try this or not. So it just so happens that he sees this news report about a mad criminal who's taking these kindergarten kids hostage with a gun, and it's a standoff with police, and Light says, you know, this, will, this world would be a lot better off without this horrible person in it. So as a lark, he writes it down in the notebook, kind of chuckling, because they've given the guy's name and they showed the guy's face. And so he does this, and lo and behold, within a minute, the news lady comes back on and says, Breaking news! The hostage taker has suddenly died! We don't know why, there's been no shots fired, but all the children are safe! And Light says, oh, oh, this is real, maybe. <laughs> and maybe it's a coincidence. So he starts researching criminals, some of whom are in custody, but, you know, are, are not, haven't been punished su sufficiently, according to Light's view. He finds out their names, sees their faces, writes them down, they all die. And so, after he's been doing this for a few days, Ryuk the Shinigami suddenly appears to Light in his room. And he says, are you enjoying my book? <laughs> he says, ah, monster! Because he's a very fearsome looking character. Light, of course, thinks he's hallucinating, but no, he's real. And it turns out his little sister barges in, and she can't see Ryuk because she hasn't touched the notebook. After the girl leaves, they discuss it, and Ryuk says, I'm not angry with you. I'm not going to punish you in any way. In fact, I'm enjoying this. Keep on doing what you're doing. and just let you know that this is what happens. And I, this notebook still belongs to me, so when it comes to be your turn to die, I will be writing your name in the book, and, and I will take you away to the afterworld. Light realizes what an awesome power he has. He has an ability to remake society, a society without crime or violence. He can become like a, a god of a new utopia. And all these egomaniacal ideas form in his young brain. <laughs> as, a, as it tends to in young men. I've been a young man once, and I know how that is. So, he continues. He's very methodical because he's a smart kid. He still keeps going to school, of course. And he's got to prepare for college. But at the same time, he researches criminals. He methodically kills them, one by one if he feels that they deserve to die. And naturally, this gets reported in the media, and this comes to the attention of the public who form this conspiracy theory. There is a vigilante out there, they reason, and he is here to save us from these horrible criminals. And we adore him, and we will call him Kira, which is a Japanese corruption of the English word killer, <laughs> because they have a hard time pronouncing L's. <laughs> so, Kira is becoming a folk hero, kind of like Paul Kersey in Death Wish. And of course, it also comes to the attention of law enforcement, because they can't have some vigilante enforcing the law on his own will, taking it into his own hands, so they call a meeting of Interpol, the International Police Organization, which is a real thing. Check it out, it's been around for over 100 years. And Interpol looks at this and says, this is, is unbelievable. We're going to call in the smartest expert we know. He's a mysterious consulting detective called 
L. And L is very zealous about his privacy. He he only he never shows his face in public. He has you know minions to do his bidding, and he doesn't give his name. That way, he's not susceptible to Kira because, as it happens, Kira is becoming paranoid already. I mean, Light Yagami sees that the authorities are after him. He knows it because his father is a police commissioner. And although he's not going to do anything to his father, he still loves his father, he realizes that some of these guys are a threat. In particular, uh, the American FBI sends over a team to assist the Japanese. And Light finds a way to get the names and pictures of all of these agents. And Light is able to wipe them all out, which really terrifies the authorities. Now they're really, really scared. And, and in fact, you know, he was once only killing criminals. Now he's killing law enforcement agents. He's killing people who are trying to be on the side of good. He's slowly becoming a megalomaniac. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, we meet Al, who is investigating this increasing threat from Kira. And Al is quirky like any good detective should be. You know, like Sherlock Holmes had his pipe and his cocaine. <laughs> and, of course, they can't promote drugs in a Japanese work, so uh, L is into sweets. He gobbles them up like crazy. He's got to get diabetes at some point. But as it happens, he's a young man still, so he's skinny as can be. He's also very weird. He crouches all the time. He sits in his chair like a monkey. He's, like, squatting. He kind of walks hunched over. And so he's a very odd character, but also very brilliant. So he's trying to figure out a way to bring Light out in the open so they can arrest him. But, you know, Light's getting worse and worse. He's in college now. He meets this young woman who's pretty and brilliant, and he's dating her because he has to have a social life. He figures, if I don't have a social life, people will suspect me of being weird. <laughs> Perhaps being Kira. But the, the girlfriend kind of threatens him in the sense that not explicitly, but he feels like she might accidentally expose him. She might find out his secret. And so she has to go. And so it's he's becoming more and more malicious. It's not just people who are threatening him. It's people who might threaten him that have to die. And uh, at the same time, L is very cleverly finding ways to narrow down uh, Kira's identity and his location by selected information he puts out in the in the media using condemned criminals as bait and seeing who dies <laughs> and uh, so Elle's narrowing it down he's getting to be a threat so Kira wants to kill him but he also gets an ally in an unexpected place there's this young teen idol her name is Misa Amane and they call her Misa Misa. She's very cute. She's, she sings, she's a model, and she dances on stage doing this kind of thing, you know, like you expect. And she uh, adores Kira because her parents were victimized by criminals and he killed them. She wants to meet him, but of course she doesn't know how. He's, he's secret. So the Shinigami help her out. This other Shinigami named Rem, she's a female uh, Shinigami and a friend of Ryuk's, she drops her notebook where Misa Misa will find it. And so Misa finds out the power of this notebook, and so eventually they meet, and they're going to be the ultimate power couple. <laughs> they are going to rule the world together and eliminate crime. As it happens, the dragnet is tightening, and L is getting closer and closer, and, and Light has been unsuccessful in finding out L's true name and face. So he's getting increasingly desperate. He has to find a way to get out of the limelight. And of course, the changing, ever-changing, ever-expanding rules of the notebook allow him to, to do so, to induce like this artificial amnesia of the notebook. And it's too complicated to go into this for a while. But anyway, he sets it up so that he will be not killing for a while. He'll forget about his role as Kira. And Misa Misa will forget too. They'll just be a couple. And he'll help out in the investigation of himself, kind of like uh, Philip K. Dix in his, uh, through a scanner darkly, kind of like that. <clears throat> He's schemed away so that he'll remember again at a certain point. Too complicated to get into right now. But another person gets a death note. He's like this corporate mogul. He's using it to eliminate his enemies. And eventually when 
light comes back, he takes care of that guy, just wipes him out. One of the reasons people loved this series so much was because of the duel of wits between these two characters. It was kind of like Sherlock Holmes versus Moriarty. And a lot of people didn't like the second half of the, of the Death Note series, in particular because L gets found out by Light and Light kills him. <laughs> yes, it appears that the anti-hero has won. And I had read somewhere that the creators of the manga wanted to end it right here. Uh, kind of a, I guess, as a cautionary morality tale, saying this is what happens when a person has ultimate power. You can't stop him. The publisher wouldn't happen. I think it was partially because the property was so popular. They didn't want to, uh, you know, kill the cash cow. And secondly, because Japanese society in particular says, you know, good must triumph, the law must be followed, evildoers must be punished. So I think it was part of that reason, because you seldom see people breaking laws in an anime and getting away with it. So they had to continue it, and they had to have another quirky detective who is able to finally bring light to justice. And so a lot of people didn't like this second part where they introduced the new detective. He looks like a little kid. <laughs> He's called Nier, and he is always playing with toys. <laughs> that's, that's his weird little quirk. And he is still, he's brilliant enough to be a, a threat to Light. And there's also this mafia character called Mello, who is another, looks very young, looks like a teenager, who is another person that's trying to help out the good guys, but at the same time playing his own game. So it gets complicated. And Light has to try and survive, so he's going to throw Misa Misa under the bus, so to speak. He's very amoral now. He's a total psychopath. Eventually, though, the good does triumph. They do end up killing Light, but not till a huge number of police have perished. And, of course, on the one hand, society has benefited. The crime has dropped a lot. But on the other hand, you think if people were unsatisfied with Kira, would they dare to say it? Because uh, Kirik would come out and say, no, you die. <laughs> so it's kind of like a reign of terror. And finally the reign of terror ends. And it's partially due to some of these heroic detectives. And these were some of my favorite characters in the, the novel. I think there was one called Matsuda. And he was very dedicated. He was going to get Kira no matter what. It does finally, <laughs> it does finally end. And I... Like I, like I said, some people found the second half to be frustrating and boring. I found it to be tense and a lot of suspense because you just didn't know how they were going to defeat Kira and all this dread, all this fear that you could be next. I enjoyed the, I loved the manga. It's one of those few, one of the few mangas I, I bought the whole set, all 12 volumes. I rarely do that. And I watched the thing all the way through, loved it. And uh, so I would give it at least four and a half gears. I mean, there's a little bit of pacing problem here and there, but yeah, at least four and a half. And then there were the other adaptations, because <laughs> it was such a popular property. They couldn't, they couldn't not exploit it. And there were several video games. Because I'm not a gamer, I know nothing of them, and I won't talk about them. There were live action adaptations. And you think, oh no, <laughs> this is going to be bad. So they started with the Japanese one. First of all, there was a movie, Death Note, and then there was Death Note 2. Because there was so much material, they put it into two movies. It actually wasn't that bad. You know, all in Japanese, with Japanese actors, you know, English subtitles. And they did a pretty good job, especially the guy who was playing L, playing the quirky detective. And the increasingly insane light. So those actors were great. And I thought it was very true to the spirit of the book, of the manga. And as I said last week, as I was giving it as an example, even though the plot changed in several places, so I did enjoy that version, at least not quite as good, but maybe four gears. Uh, and then there was a sequel <laughs> called L Changed the World. Yes, even though L dies, they somehow, they somehow worked it out so that the great detective gets to solve one more crime before he dies. 
and this is like bioterrorism. It has nothing to do with the story. It's pretty bad. There are characters that have cameos from the previous movie. It's just annoying fan service. I would give that two gears. <laughs> and then there was the Netflix adaptation. Of course, America had to get into it. They had to make it in English. They had to set it in America. In this case, Seattle. They had to use American actors, including a black L. And I hate to say this, because I do, did like the actor who played L, and he was in Get Out. Uh, and uh, I don't know his name at the moment, but I may, but I may put it on screen. Uh, I like him as an actor, but this this movie was a stinker. And I would probably give it one and a half years because it was so bad. I mean, they they changed some of the motivations of some of the characters. Like Misa Misa is really evil in this one, and she was she was more like naive in the original. So. I, I just despised this one, and the critics didn't like it much either. I was surprised it got to 28% in Rotten Tomatoes. That said, they didn't stop there. They made a musical. Yes, Death Note the musical. When I heard that, I laughed out loud. This is preposterous. <laughs> but, nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, it happened, and it actually got well received. And Mrs. Desperado and I found it on YouTube, and, and we decided to watch it. And we were prepared for a hate-watch, free, a laugh fest. Uh, but we were amazed to see it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, it was a little forced, a little tropey, but nonetheless, it, it actually kind of worked. And it, you know, was well received in Japan, and it was. Uh, done in Korea, I guess last year they received some awards for it because COVID kind of interrupted stuff, and so last year they received awards. It's been adapted in Brazil, <laughs> and they do have an English language version of the lyrics, which I have heard, but I don't know if it's ever been performed here. I hope to see it at some time on the American stage. So it's it's not bad. I kind of recommend it. I'll put I'll put the link uh, in my description so you can check it out. You don't have to pay for it. I'd say uh, maybe three and a half years. <laughs> it's interesting, let's say. And so, all these adaptations, why has it been so popular and successful? Two reasons, I think. One is it's a power fantasy, which very much appeals to the original audience of the of the uh, anime, which is shonen uh, for adolescent boys and young men. Secondly, there's this... Uh, commentary on the human condition. It's kind of an allegory on what happens when a normal person, even a well-intentioned smart person, gets absolute power. You know, kind of like what has happened with dictators through the world. And in that sense, it's very fascinating. That's one of the reasons I found it so fascinating. To answer the original question that I posed in the title of this video, Death Note, preposterous or profound? I'd say it's a little preposterous, but it's mostly profound. Yeah, sometimes you have to use a crazy fantasy notion to say something important. Kind of like Jonathan Swift with Gulliver's Travels. That's why I recommend it. That's why I think it's worth watching, even if you're not an anime nerd. So this has been my review of Death Note, the manga, the anime, and the other adaptations. And whether or not it's worth seeing, whether or not they say anything that's worth listening to. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Please give me other suggestions. I have an anime playlist on my channel, so please check it out if you're an anime fan. Uh, please also comment on any other suggestions or comments you may have down below. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe uh, so that we can continue to get off the good steampunk word. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future, and the present is extraordinary.